dedicate this time to in your life. Because right now, ultimately, he can speak, but if we're not receiving, it doesn't really benefit. Thank you, Father. So preparing our hearts to receive right yeah. now. So right now, between you and him, why don't you just say, Lord, I choose now to surrender, to receive your word today. Let your word bring life to me. Let the areas that just have been unkept and undone, let those areas be inhabited by you to cleanse me, to create in me a new place, a new heart. today I pray that if any are here today that are blinded or deafened to your word that Holy Spirit that you would enlighten them so they could see and hear today let your love be shown through this word above all Lord the hope of glory the love that you have that you loved us first no matter what we've done you said hey come to me all who are weary, yeah. who are heavy, yes. laden, yeah. and burdened, yeah. and I will give you rest. Yes. Thank you, Father. So today, Father, I pray for those who need the rest, Thank who you, need Father. the peace, who have been carrying Lord, heavy burdens, that you lighten the load from them right now. Thank you, Father. And that, devil, we declare you will not take them. Yeah. You can't have them. Yeah. I thank you that we are born again, yeah. blood-bought yeah. children of the King. In your word. I declare that today that Amanda and I have the mind of yes, Christ. Yes. Our tongues are anointed Lord, to declare the word today. We'll do it Lord, in love. We'll do it with boldness. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, my brother. You got me blasting up here now, homie. <laughs> you wanted to hear it real deep, didn't you? Hello. <laughs> hey, darling. No. All right, so if, if you weren't here the last few Sundays or the last months, then you don't know that Amanda and myself have been in a series together, basically part of this series, talking about chasing the call. Mm -hmm. And that is umbrellaed underneath restoration. And God has not allowed me to get off of this topic. He's like, stick with it, stick with it. So that's what we're going to do. So I know this is carried on from 2022 into 2023. And listen, if he wants to go to 24, that's up to him. Right. But we've been in this uh, for many, many weeks. But last week, if you missed it, we talked about two things. Mm -hmm. We talked, the main points that we talked right, about right. was motives mm -hmm. and opinions. Do you remember that? It was about motives and opinions. And we said that both of those are crucial factors in our walk with God. They're crucial to us fulfilling our role within God's kingdom. Our motives and our opinions. Wrong motives create unproductive prayers. That's a, that's a statement that, that you need to understand. That God looks at the motive of the heart. The intentions of what you do. Amen. You could be praying for something that is outside of God's word. You could be praying for something for selfish gain. And see, motives, wrong motives in prayer, what they do is they become unproductive. So wrong motives create unproductive prayers. Are my prayers for the kingdom and its advancement, or are my prayers for my elevation? The common thing when we pray is, is about what we need, what we desire, what we want for ourselves to become. Come on, a lot of our prayers, you really listen to it, are self um, motivated right. and point to self-elevation. 
And we have to be careful because the prayer time, there's, we do have a prayer of petition. Yes. We, do, we do pray and ask for God. He said, pray, ask of me. But that's not the only type of prayer we should be praying. That's not the only communication we should be having with heaven is, is saying, I need, I want, I desire, help me, help me, help me. Come on, Amen. somebody, help Amen. me out here today. Amen. I know, I know it's, uh, you know, it's, it's in the afternoon and we're hitting that lull right here, but help me out for a minute. <laughs> there, there has to be a prayer time with the Father that's truly about him and the kingdom and not about us and our elevation and our pride and our rubbing our, you know, our back getting rubbed and our kudos. Yes. There are three questions to check the motive of my prayer. Three questions that I can ask myself to check the motives behind my prayer. Number one, am I praying for God's glory or is it for my reward? In my prayer, is this for God's glory or is it for my reward? It's a good check question. It is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 31. Would you read that for us? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything I do should be for the glory of God. Amen. This is even talking even about your consumption. Yeah. Should be about glorifying God. My speech should be about glorifying God. My decisions should be about glorifying God. What I do on the job. What I do on the job should be glorifying unto the Father. Yes. Now, listen, we, some of us got a lot of room to grow right there. Because mm -hmm. on the job, we, we sometimes have to go through some things and are going through some things that you're like, God, I, I, now those are the times I have to petition. I need you right now <laughs> so I can bring glory to you in this situation because in a minute, it ain't going to go very well if I don't have your uh, anointing for Amen. this moment. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So the first question I ask in my prayer life, and, and maybe you could do this as well, is, is ask yourself, am I praying for God's glory or are my prayers being prayed for my reward? Mm. And those could be things, God, see me. Or he sees you, but where can I be to be elevated? It's all about me. And it's not about his glory. Right? We can get, I mean, we in our nature are self driven. Our children are. We are that as well. But when we mature in Christ, we start looking at his face. Instead of what he can do to benefit me. Well, maturity will bring a shift in your prayer life. Yes. And you look at natural kids and they, they're they mainly focused on me, mine, mine, mine. Mm -hmm. That's mine and me and mine. The more you mature and grow, it gets left in what you, less than what you have and more of what you can give. Amen. A stingy heart is, a mature, is an immature heart. Yes. I said a stingy person is immature. Yes. But a giving heart, man, you can look and there's something that's happened to mature them and the fact is they recognize the, the worth of people. Yes. Amen. The second question to ask yourself, am I praying in line with the scriptures? Are my prayers aligned with the word of God? If we're praying anything outside of the word of God and the character and nature of who God is, they will not be answered. I say this, and people look at me kind of funny. God is not obligated to answer prayers that are prayed outside of his word. Amen. Amen. But he is obligated to answer prayers in faith from his word. Not taken out of context, word. No, not taken out of context. <laughs> but the obligation is he's a God of his word. Yes. What he says, he does. Yes. 
So am I praying in line with the scripture, Psalms 119, 105? Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths right. If you want a life that is led by God, we have to get into the word of God. The word of God has to become part of your vocabulary. Amen. And a lot of times, you know, I can do that. We can get into, you know, we, we have the time of prayer. We're, we're going through, and then all of a sudden we'll have our to-do list come up, or we're, we'll start getting into things of what we need, and we'll start um, doing things. And, and what, just for me, what I like to do is God showed, Jesus showed us how to pray. And I have to constantly go back to holy is your name. Holy is your name. I have. I bring that back into remembrance to line my prayers back up with his words and not being put back on self. You have to be cognizant of that. Yeah. Cognizant is a big word. I like it. Thank you. you, I, you read, I read books. You, yes, you do. A lot of them. <laughs> like, what, 30-something books last year? I read 31 year? last year. 31? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's important that we go back and we know mm-hmm. who's first. Because in, in the prayer, our Father, mm-hmm. which art in heaven, hallowed be the holy is holy thy name. Holy is your name. That's the first step of prayer is the recognition or recognizing right. the holiness of God, the right. reverence of God. Not coming and say, what's up, pops? How about them braves? You know, I know we want to preach God to be our homeboy, but there still has to be a reverence. Amen. He is he, he said he is the friend of man. You know, God, yes. we're the friend of God. Yes. But the thing is, is we can come in with disrespect. Common. We've commonized him. Right. Brought him down to the level of common. He brought him down to our level. And that, my friend, is something that has over the last decade or more mm-hmm. become more common inside the church to where we've taken God and put him on a common level on our level, to where we define the terms of who he is and what we will and will not do. And we've done it in every area, not just in our prayer life, in how we serve and how we relate to the body, how we relate to our pastors, how we relate to the tithe. We've done it in every area. Absolutely. Number three, you ready for the third way? Guys, you didn't start the timer either. Number three, am I praying... In surrender. Am I praying in surrender? Praying in surrender is so important because what it's doing is is saying, God, whatever your will is, I submit my will to it. Amen. Right? And here's the question. Why are we even right now, why are we in this 21 days of prayer and fasting? Why? What's the purpose? You don't have to answer it out loud. You know, this is just a question to ask. Why am I doing this? What is the purpose of this? Why am I even seeking God right now? Why am I fasting? Hmm. The question is, are we doing it and trying to get God to understand our need? But I can say we've been guilty. I've been guilty of that before. Even our time of prayer and fasting has been self, uh, selfish yes. to where it's about us mm-hmm. and about what God can do for us. I'm fasting because I need to hear from God to do something. But that's not the point of why we're fasting. You're fasting not so God can speak louder. It's so that you can stop speaking and saying what you got going on and surrender to him and say, God, your way, not mine. I don't need to come in with my emotion, with all this. I need to come in and say, God, I humbly come before you so that you can rule and reign in my life. And we see a lot of churches doing it, and it's it, all different types. Now, we could say, oh, it's just a fad. This is what every church does. Or you can look at it as we do it in the first month because it's the first to him. Put him first. Put him first. It's just like the tithe. We put him first. So the first of the year, we're coming in the year, going to be praying and fasting. It's, it's, it's the first of it. So why are we doing this? Are we trying to get God to understand our need? Or 
or are we trying to get our needs out of the way so we can get God's understanding? Amen. I'm fasting to get my needs out of the way. Mm -hmm. My my cravings, my my inability to control Mm -hmm. what I do. I'm getting control of some things because it's been totally out of control. I'm getting my need out of the way because God, really what I need is your word, your understanding. That's what I need in my life. Amen. So it's the approach that we come inside of prayer and fasting is we don't need to come with selfish motives. It's just for us. No, it's, it's so we get out of the way so God can be glorified through us. Amen. And that's why we're doing this. God, I want you to be glorified more this year in 2023 than you did in 2022 or 21 or especially 20. Hallelujah. But God, I want you glorified. <laughs> So this year I come in in a year and I surrender to you because, God, I want you. I need you. I'm nothing without you. You you see what I'm saying? That's the way we're coming, not, God, I need to know how I'm going to pay this house payment. And I'm fasting to know how to pay a house. Lord, I'm fasting for a mate right now. (laughs) You better hope you just need a paper mate. Get you a pencil or a pen or something. (laughs) Hello? Hello? I'm not fasting for something. I'm fasting to surrender to give up something so he can have more of me. Amen. See, I'm not here to move God. I'm here to surrender me. Amen. When you approach your prayer that way, I'm not here to move God. I'm here to surrender me. Mm -hmm. There's a different approach to it. Because why are we trying to move God? A lot of times we want God to move for selfish reasons. Amen. But there's no selfishness in surrender. Amen. Amen. Hello. Now, God will come and he'll show up and he will move. That's his grace and his mercy. But if you want to have a, I mean, just like a boost in your prayer life, let it be a prayer of surrender. Let it be a prayer that says, God, I'm here to glorify you. Let it be a prayer that you come in and say, God, I'm going to declare your word, not the circumstance. Amen. Amen. I love that statement. I'm not here to move God. I'm here to surrender me. Amen. We have to stop evaluating a move of God based on the change in the atmosphere. Because a real move of God results in a change of heart. So many people you hear, man, God was moving. Ooh, you could just feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, the glory was thick there today. And I've been in, in services like that. But if we don't walk away with a heart difference, a heart change, then all we did was come to be entertained. Amen. We might as well went and watched a movie and got goosebumps. <laughs> because if we didn't walk away change, we didn't take advantage of the encounter. Yeah. And I want to tell you, man, don't take it, don't let an opportunity with an encounter with God be taken for granted. When this when you gather together and the Spirit of the Lord is moving. It's time to surrender. Because just walking away because somebody else got touched or you see just a great atmosphere happened. That's not how we rule whether God was moving in the house. It's how much hearts were changed that day. It's not how well Bubba and them sang that day or played the guitar that day or the piano. Or did you hear, man, did you hear that lick that Pastor Amanda played on that bass today? Man, the Holy Spirit was in the fingers and the toes. (laughs) They were just going off. And then she, she did the two-step Shandai. Come on, she did the chicken dance and the Raymer run. It was on that day. That's good. You can run around the building. You can jump chairs, and, and you can Shandai all you want to. I wore my Shandai shirt today for you. You wore your Shandai all you want to, but if you didn't walk out with a changed heart, then all we did was have emotions. We had a party in here. Amen. Yeah. 
Change my heart, God. If you want a real encounter with God, change me. And watch what happens. When our heart changes, he'll begin to renew things, put things together, heal things up, Amen. restore things. It comes out of a heart of surrender. Stop trying to move God. Hear me. Stop trying to move God. And say, God, no, I'm not here to move you. I'm here to surrender to you. Amen. That is putting him first. And what happens when you do that, he does move. He's, it's his obligation. That's what he's compelled. That's what he's created. And he, that's his character. It, it's his character. That's who he it's is. his nature. But we want to put the other way around. We want him to do it the other way. But he said, no, that's not who I am. I'm holy. I'm a holy God. James chapter 4, verse number 3. This is NIV. It says, when you ask... You do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may send or spend what you get on your pleasures. So there is a motive behind what we ask. Mm -hmm. He said, you're not getting what you need because you, all you're praying for is your needs. See, if you put me first, I'll supply all your needs. The supply of the needs doesn't come just because the request is made. It's when the surrender happens Amen. to open up the blessings to flow in our life. It's just with like anything in the kingdom of God, just like the principle of giving. If you have the wrong heart, you can cancel out the full reward of a giver, Amen. of a tither. Because of the heart motive. Why am I doing this? I'm, am I giving, am I planting seed or giving the tithes back to the Lord because I'm trying to get something? Mm -hmm. Or is it truly a heart of God? This belongs to you. Lord, I know that you're going to bless me, but I didn't come here to give to you mm -hmm. so I can have the kingdom lottery. And get me a reward, get me a reward. Mm-hmm. Hope I land my digits land on it today. <laughs> Hope my prayer lands before you today, God. Oh, here we go. I'm going to pay a dollar. God doesn't have the lottery and roulette. He's not playing all that roulette. But when we come with the right heart attitude and say, God, it's yours. See, there's something about the first. And when we say, God, it's yours, he blesses the rest of it. Amen. But it's the motive of the heart. The motivation of a heart is so important to God. Motivation means this, the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. Proverbs 21.2 says, people may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart said this statement last week that God is more focused on your heart and my heart than my role, than my position. Whether I'm recognized. He's more focused on this because I could be talented but have a bad heart and all I'm going to do is sow seeds of this heart wherever I go. Amen. He's focused on the reason behind my requests more so than the request itself. God cares, but he is more looking at the reason why my requests are being made known. Mm -hmm. Go back to those three questions we talked about right in the beginning to ask, making sure the motives of our prayers are correct. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in check because we can get sloppy. We can get greedy. Amen. We can get selfish. It happens to the best of us. So we have to put checks in place and say, well, 
I've gone too far. That's what repentance is for. That's what turning it back around. That's what grace is for. And let's get back on board and, and rock it and roll. And let's go, God, I'm ready. I'm sorry. I could be gifted to play a big role in God's kingdom, but if my heart and intent is wrong, then my gift and role is useless. Proverbs 27, 19 says, as water reflects the face, no one's life reflects. So one's life reflects the heart. Did you get that? As water reflects the face. As water reflects the face. My life will reflect my heart. Life reflects your heart. So the life you're living is a reflection of the heart that you have right now. So the fruit of my heart is a result of the field within my heart. And what is sown in the heart fields will be harvested in my life. Let me say that again. The fruit of my life is a result of the field of my heart. Our hearts are where seeds are planted, whether good or bad. What we allow in and hear. If we allow the rejection that people try to give us in here, the seeds of rejection are planted in our heart. Amen. If we allow the seeds of bitterness to be mm-hmm. planted in here and we don't address it and weed it out, it will grow in our heart. Okay? But if we allow the word of God to be sown into our heart, the same yeah. things happen. It begins to grow in here. So the fruit of my life, what I see, The result, the harvest of what I have of my life is the result of the field within my heart, what's planted in here. Because what is sown in my heart field will be harvested in my life. Amen. If I want the harvest in my life to change, then I need to start really looking at the seed that's planted into my heart. what I'm allowing to stay. A willing and obedient heart is greater than the talent that I can bring. Mm -hmm. A willing and obedient heart is greater than any talent, any gifting that I can bring. And when we get so focused on our talent and we think our talent is so big and so important, and we don't watch our heart, it'll start bleeding out into the people around us. We can tell. You can tell a difference. You can tell when you don't have a heart for people. You just have a heart to, for, you, yourself, for you. For you. Yeah. And that self-centered heart will eventually draw, withdraw you from wanting to be in his presence. Yeah. You don't hunger and thirst after him. You don't hunger and thirst after him. But you'll, wanna, you'll want your talent, your gift to still expand. Yes. But you'll do it absence of his presence. Yeah. It'll be in the flesh. Yes. And that's where we're talking, they come in talking about the anointing. Yeah. There's not a short supply of talent in the kingdom. You're not the only one with your gift or your talent. You know that, right? Mm hmm. Just because you sing pretty doesn't mean that there's nobody else that can sing like you. Just because you can preach real good doesn't mean that nobody else has that gift. Mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and what God created is not short of talent. Or just have, because you have the ability to open up your wallet and give $100 whenever you want to, doesn't really matter if your heart's not right. Right. The kingdom of God is not broke either. Mm -mm. There's plenty of people that are serving God with plenty of money. Mm -hmm. So it's not about that. Right. There's plenty of money. There's plenty of talent in the kingdom of God. But here's what the need is. Are you ready to, you want to know what the need in the kingdom is? If, if the kingdom ever had a need, this is the need. Willing and obedient hearts. Amen. Willing and obedient hearts. If, if we really needed something in the church today, we need willing and obedient hearts. Willing to surrender and willing to say yes. 
I only do that when uh, I hear the Holy Spirit tell me. The Holy Spirit's already told you. Yeah. You're here to serve. Amen. That you're here to reconcile man with God whatever way possible I'm needed. You don't have to hear the Holy Spirit to work in nursery. You don't have to hear the Holy Spirit to greet at the door. You don't have to hear the Holy Spirit to help out inside your body and local assembly where they have a need. That's a cop-out because you're lazy. Amen. You don't want to do it. You don't want to be a part of it. You're selfish. I said it. I'll drop the mic if you want. But that's if we want truth. I mean, you want truth. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, is a lot of times we put a cop out on, let me pray about it. Really, you don't want to do it because you're hurt or you got an issue. Or I'm just lazy. Or, yeah, some people just lazy. <laughs> just lazy. Look, I've got days where I want to be lazy. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. There's some days you're like, I don't want to do nothing to sit back. We had a day today where two people were on stage singing, and the rest of the praise and worship team, or the one or two that were in here, were the rest of them, I don't know where they are, we got one were in nursery. here. Yeah. They might be in nursery. They might be serving somewhere else. I don't know what they're doing. Right. But he, they were here just to receive. Amen. There's nothing wrong with saying, whew, let me receive today. Right. Right? But we don't have to set that and say, that's all I'm going to do is receive. Until you release some things that you're receiving, you're not going to have the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. Or if you say, I only serve here, because that's my gift. No. No. <laughs> we are here to serve wherever we're needed. Exactly. Whatever needs to be done, Lord, I'm here. And when we do that, the gifting that God has in our life will start to be shown and will begin to develop. Amen. Because it's developed through your surrender. Amen. The anointing is going to come on your gift through your surrender. Amen. A lot of people think it's going to come through my practice and through my going over here and doing this and going over and doing it. No, mm -hmm. you can be the best musician in the world and have no anointing. Amen. All that means is, is you play pretty music. But I've heard people, man, that aren't the best musicians, but walk in and, man, when they play and they sing, the anointing drops Amen. and the glory drops and things begin to happen. That's a difference. They're there to surrender. They're not about their gift there. They're Amen. just here to say, God, you gave me this, and I give it back to you. Amen. Amen. And listen to me. I mean, I know that was kind of a harsh statement I made just a minute ago, but that is, I just, I mean, I want, I want to be real with you. Right? I'm not here to beat around the bush. We have enough of that going on in, inside the church today, and I'm not here to offend you either. Mm -mm. And if you're offended at me, come talk to me. But can I, can I encourage you, if you're offended at somebody else, go talk to them too. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, there are people inside the body you may have some hurt, some issue with. Let's get it gone. Amen. Because you're never going to move forward until you get that out of your path. Is it worth not having the body whole, holding on to things that keep you from functioning fully? Amen. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And listen, you know, I don't care if you don't, I don't mind you come here and don't serve and don't touch a thing. You're always welcome here. That's not the thing. But what I'm saying is if you truly want to grow into the kingdom of God, you got to put your hands to the kingdom. Amen. And what I'm trying to say is, is you don't have to pray about putting your hands to the kingdom. Amen. You just get involved and then watch God. He will begin to point you into where you were gifted to. Amen. Amen. I was... Um, off with a pastor friend of ours yesterday. We went up uh, towards Birmingham and just spent the day with them. And we were talking, you know, some of this. We do pastor talk, right? There's, I can't talk to much stuff about people or about the church, but to other pastors I will. We're, we're talking about the right. state of the church right. and the state of what's going on. And it was kind of talking about this, right. about the ministry and, and the, the having to put your hands. Do you remember what we were, what we were we saying? We were talking about... Uh, I am somebody. Somebody needs to do this, and somebody oh, yeah. needs to do that. I say, you know what Pastor John does? He says, I need somebody to do this. I'll look around, and I'll wait, and I'll count a few seconds, and I'll get up, and I'll do it, because you know what? I am somebody. Yeah, I am somebody. I, I, I do that to a lot of people. Somebody needs to go vacuum. I say, repeat after me. I am somebody. And so what you did is you had somebody at work t saying, I like to do this, but I need somebody to do this, and somebody to do this, and somebody to do this, before I can get there. <laughs> and you told them, stop. 
Repeat after me. I did it in the meeting. I am somebody. <laughs> I did it in the meeting, and I was thinking, man, I'm not in church. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but that's the thing. We say, well, I'm waiting on somebody else to do something before I even prepare or before I'll even do something. Well, you are somebody. Stop waiting somebody. on and, and I, I get like that about anything. Well, I need somebody else to get this before I can do this. You are somebody. Why aren't you out there searching? Why aren't you being creative? Why aren't you thinking up great ideas? You've got the idea because I need somebody to do it. Well, get out there and be somebody. Okay. We're going to be somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Is that true? Right? I'm, what we're doing is, is take it, this is 23, right? Let's take right. away the excuse. Amen. I'm not doing because of this. I'm not doing because of that. Well, what are you doing? Well, I mean, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> no, you said it too. I didn't. But it's true. I mean, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Right? And, and I'm not trying to be rough. I'm not trying to beat you in this at all. But there has to be a wake-up call. Somebody has to step up and say, hey, baby, it's time that we grow one more notch today, right? Let's take a little more. Let's take one more step than we have before. Growing is not always fun. Amen. But it is productive. Amen. All right. According to Holman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, uh, Here's, here's the definition of biblical obedience. What it means is to hear God's word and act accordingly. So I'm a hearer and a doer. So kingdom obedience is for his glory, not our gain. Amen. God desires a great heart, not a great gift. Say great heart. Great heart. If you have the great gift, I mean, that's just a plus but he does, his desire is more for a great heart. A willing and obedient heart to God's word will bring the anointing to your gift. Did you hear that? A willing and obedient heart to God's word will bring anointing, the anointing to your gifting. And here's the thing. When I started speaking, I wasn't really great at it, right? But the anointing came when I released that ability, that gift to it. Same thing. When I picked up the bass 22 years ago, I had never picked up an instrument. I did not take band in high school or elementary school or anything. I did not have any musical whatsoever. I'm still not the greatest at it. But you know what? When I get up there and I worship, the anointing flows because I'm releasing the gift. When you say, I don't have a gift for this, and so therefore I'm not going to put my hands to it, even though there is a need for it, you have strength, you have taken the anointed and you have struggled it, choked it out from being able to work in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could, be, it, be, it could be an opportunity of growth. It could right. be an opportunity of learning and understanding. Same thing when I started doing praise and worship. We needed, the need was there. Right. I'd never been a worship leader. I, I didn't even know I could sing that well. But I did it. And, I, and through that time, it, it was rough in the beginning, and I began to grow in it. But through that surrender, it became anointed worship. It did. It wasn't just somebody singing. Even though I didn't know what I was doing, when it became anointed, things began to happen. We began in worship seeing people get healed. During worship, people just, just getting into the presence, just amazing things happen. But it was through the surrender that happened. And during that season and that time, I learned how to appreciate worship. Amen. Where before I would stand or sit there or stand there in the audience and go, okay, we'll just sing a little bit. When are they going to get done? What's next? I was not an intimate worshiper before I was put in the position to have to lead worship. It taught me. See, that's what we're talking about is when opportunities arise for you to put your hands to something, don't be afraid to put your hands to it because maybe on the other side of it, you're deeper walking in your faith and your understanding and appreciation for that area. Amen. You, I appreciate nursery workers because I've been in the nursery. Amen. 
And if you've never served in the nursery, then you don't know the battleground in there. Same with children's ministry? Children's ministry is the same way. Youth ministry. Youth ministry. Talk we were about talking to the, our pastor friends, and he said, you know what? A pastor does not need to lead a church until he leads a youth group. That's what I was going to say. So we were talking about that even the pastor of a church, a true, I believe a pastor needs to have served in the roles and aspects of the church. If they haven't, they can't appreciate it. We've ran sound. I know what it's camera. like. The camera, the sound, computer. the computer. Children's, yeah. nursery, youth. Put my hands to it. Yeah. Not because I wanted to. I didn't go, you know what, God? You called me to the nursery. Hallelujah. I Let's go. No. College ministry. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what happened is, is they, there was nobody there. And we said, you know what? We'll take care of it. We got you. Mm-hmm. I want you to go into the sanctuary and be blessed today. That's ministry, man. To give a parent a moment to get away so they can listen and concentrate. Amen. I love kids. I do. I love kids. But you know as well as I do, everybody else don't love your kids' noises as much as you do. You stand it because you're around them all day, so you hear it. So you've got that kid mute button going on. But all the rest of us don't. Right. And we do it to each other because our kids make certain noises and we're okay with it. Then everybody else is like, man, Mm -hmm. right? We don't even see it. But ministry is, is going, you know what? I'm going to take your baby and I'm going to treat him like my own. And I'm going to sow some Jesus seed in them today while you go in there and be blessed. Take a break, sister, and go get, go get some worship. Go get some word today. Amen. You don't know how much ministry you just did to help somebody out. Amen. I had one of them that cried all the time. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even go eat with him because he cried all the time. So when we put him in nursery, I got away. I was like, thank you, Jesus, for a moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I went to church just for a moment. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. He's back there running the computer now. He's good. <laughs> He's a blessing. But serve in the areas. And that's what we're talking about is a true pastor, I believe, has, needs to have served in every area Mowed of the, the ministry. Be out there mowing the grass. Like I've, the I've mowed grass, maintained buildings, painted, mm-hmm. washed, vacuumed, soaked up water, had to replace ceiling tiles. You name it. I was a maintenance man, mm-hmm. man mopping. Some, and I had, I've, been, I've been wanting to write something. Sometimes you just need a mop. you got to start somewhere. You gotta be willing to start somewhere. Yeah, be willing. It's it's a hard attitude just with that too. It's yes. not, I'm not just doing it because the need is there. I'm He's doing it because I'm surrendering to a the willing service. Willing and obedient heart. Willing and obedient. Yes. Willing. Thank you. You're yes. absolutely correct. <laughs> Again. <sighs> He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> so a willing and obedient heart to God's word will bring the anointing to your gift. Anointing is the burden-removing and yoke-breaking power of God. Anointing is the burden-removing and yoke-breaking power of God. So I'm not anointed for that. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Then you're filled with power to break them yokes. Bring the anointing with you. We bring the Holy Spirit, but it's through the surrender. Yes. Okay. Okay. My surrender to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, I said Spirit, Spirit. Wow, it's country right there. <laughs> my surrender to the Holy Spirit with my willing and obedient heart to God's word adds anointing to my gift. My surrender to the Holy Spirit and willing and obedient heart to God's word is what adds anointing to my gift. It takes my natural and makes it supernatural. Amen. Hello? Amen. So I want you to repeat this after me. I'm living, I'm living the abundant life. The abundant life. Because, because I'm, living I'm living a surrendered life. A surrendered life. I'm living the abundant life because I'm living the surrendered life. Because when I surrender, it attracts his anointing. Amen. Man. Mm. 
There's one thing about surrender that is tough for mankind. You know what that is? Our opinions. Our will and our way. So I think we need to come back to the opinions next time. We've yeah. covered, we covered motive pretty motive good. Motive pretty good, yeah. So next week when we get back together, let's talk about opinions. Okay, I know we introduced it last time. But I believe the review we did on, on motives today kind of even expanded into our prayer and motivation behind what we do, right? And the surrender of our heart and, and how we surrender to the, the call and the need for things inside the ministry, it will draw the anointing to help us meet the need. Amen. Some people may feel they're not qualified, but I'm going to tell you when the anointed comes, it can help you. Amen. There are many of jobs that I had taken that I wasn't qualified for because I do not have a formal college education. However, God anoints you and he gives you in the role that you are. And so I was able to, because I was willing and obedient, whatever they did, listen to management and understood and didn't try to fight back and try to give my own ideas, but followed through, I was able to be promoted. I mean, how many do you know with a semi-college become a quality auditor who reports to OSHA and a corporation? Not many happen like that. And somebody, I had worked another job, and I was going through, and I was able to organize. I revamped this um, nonprofit who had basically zero dollars at the beginning of one year or about at the middle of the year. And by the end of the year, they had over $100,000 in the bank account. And she's like, oh, how were you able to do this? I said, God graced me. I said, I don't have any education. I don't have any knowledge on this. But God graced me to be able to do this because I said yes. yes. Amen. That was it. Yep. So just say yes. Just say yes. The three things in our prayers, you remember those? Three questions. To check the motives of our prayers. Number one, I'm praying for am I praying for God's glory or is it for my reward? Number two, am I praying in the line with the scriptures? Does it match up with his word? And number three, am I praying in surrender? So those were three one of the three of the main points that we made today. But also understanding is that really if I want to draw the presence of God, what I've got to do is surrender me. Amen. I've got to humble myself and say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. It is your kingdom. This is your temple. If it's his temple, that means he can re redo what he wants to right, do with it. Right. But I have to be willing and obedient with that temple. Oh, yeah. I can't say, hey. Jesus make me skinny, and if I won't get up and walk to the mailbox. The Lord, hush. <laughs> I prayed that prayer. Uh, nope. No, mm -hmm. you got to get up. You got to. You got to move. You got to be willing, obedient. Yeah. You got something, Mama? Yes. Here, hold on. If you don't know, this is my beautiful Mama, and uh, she's an amazing woman of faith. And if she says I got something, guess what? She gonna get it. You know, I um, put on Facebook the other day about surrender. And if you don't have a surrendering heart, a surrendered heart is not easy because it means it's, you can't do your will. And when uh, Pastor and I uh, were called to go to Bible college, uh, we had to give, we gave away everything and we left family behind. And we had a lot of people that did complain about it and said, we, you know, uh, what about your family? What about this? But if, when you hear God, you've got to do God. You can't let anything hinder you from doing what God's called you to do. And from there, we went to Raymond and then we started a church there and then the Lord called us to the mission field. I said the Lord called pastor to mission field. <laughs> I finally had to give up and uh, surrender. But the, the, there we did, and we had to give again. Again, we had to leave family. We had to leave what I, I wanted to go to. Uh, pastor got to go to Bible college. I wanted to go to Bible college. But the Lord said go to the mission field. 
And so you've got to have a heart that will hear God and do God. If your heart is not about hearing God and doing God, then you can't have a surrendered life. If God speaks to you, no matter what it is, people may make fun of you, may uh, not have anything to do with you, whatever it may be. But the reward is that Pastor and I can see a lot of lives that were changed and a nation that was changed because we were willing to give up everything and go and do what he said to do. And so that this talking about surrender and when you hear God, you just do God. Amen. You don't sit there and think, I wonder if I should do this. Should I work in the nursery today? Should I go to the prayer meeting? Should I? No, you just do. So I just wanted to encourage you with that because a lot of people never understood um, Dr. Brogdon and I because we did leave all. And even Pastor John said, I don't know if I could do that. But when you, when you truly hear God, because it's not easy for them to pastor, but when you hear God, you do God. Amen. And so that's about our life has to be totally surrendered to not my way, God, but your will be done. Amen. There's a lot of wisdom right there. Amen. And so, yeah, I was completely honest with them because I started to think about, you know, my parents gave away everything, took us to the mission field. And I, th I was thinking one day, I was like, you know, could I right now just give everything away? Take what we had in savings and say, we're gone. Well, I'm just going to take the kids and we're going to go serve God in another country. <laughs> With nobody there that we knew. And I had to be quite honest. I said, no, I couldn't do it right now. But see, God graced him for that because God called him to do that. And he didn't call me to do that. But see, <clears throat> if God called me to do it, then he would empower me to do it. Amen. Right? But it's like pastoring. You said something that's true. It's difficult to pastor, especially where, where I'm, what I'm doing in my life right now, where I'm at. And I have a lot of people go, I don't know how you do it. And my response is, me either. But when you know. Amen. See, that's the thing is, is, is a lot of people want to get to that place, like in the five-fold ministry, but you're not willing to work through the steps to get where you need to go until you can hear clearly, this is what you are called or gifted to do. Go. And he'll grace you to do it. Amen. Because it's not a burden to pastor. Mm -mm. He's graced us to do it. Amen. Even working 60 to 70 hours a week. I'll come in here and I'm like, man, I love doing this. Amen. Right? But it took, I, that's why I just didn't jump on being a pastor. I wasn't ready. But thank God for his grace. Amen. Be willing to say yes. A surrendered heart, a surrendered life will draw that anointing on you and enable you to do things like I said, it's going to bring the super to your natural. Amen. Amen. You good? Is it all right today? Did you get something? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Dude, that was a really bad hand clap. <laughs> Can we give the Lord a hand clap at least then? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, let me pray over you. Father, I thank you so much for your word today. I pray over every person here. I call them the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, and more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I declare that they're blessed coming in, blessed going out, and everything they put their hands to, they prosper. I pray that, Lord, if any here today don't know you, have never had a relationship with you, that today, right now, would be their day. Friend, all you have to do is reach out in faith. You know that you need him right now. You feel in your heart a tug. And just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you now, a sinner, and I need the Savior. 
That Savior I know is Jesus Christ. I ask you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. Live there today. I'll serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys, man. Love you.